Amen and amen. It's good to see you this morning. You know, our Lord is worthy to be praised. Saturday is a week ago, our brother Sanders went to be with Jesus. We mourn his leaving, but we're supposed to rejoice because we know the Lord said to him, Enter thou in, thou good and faithful servant. Then Monday, a friend of mine in Port Lavaca who used to attend Bible Way Temple with her father, Sister Arlene Marshall, went to be with the Lord. And then Wednesday, a special friend of mine who was a pastor for 45 years in Dayton, Ohio, Sister Doris Swartz, went to be with the Lord. So we can rejoice for them. Their work is over. Their time here in this earth is gone. You know, if we don't draw upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to make it. You wonder and you ask yourselves, why is life so hard today when 10 years ago it was better? It's because the old Roman Empire is back in control. Well, we don't call our government the old Roman Empire, do we? No, but that's what it is. The old Roman Empire that was exemplified by being iron legs and iron feet with the toes mixed with clay, which means man's involvement in it, is back in control. And you know what? The old Roman Empire is the one is to be in control when the Antichrist comes. For three and a half years, it'll still be the old Roman Empire when he comes on the scene. But when he destroys the false church and sets himself up into the temple and proclaims himself God, the old Roman Empire is over. And it's entered into the eighth nation that's in the empire that's ruling. And that's the one of the Antichrist. Oh, but folks, let me tell you, three and a half years later, it's over. <laughs> it's over. You know why it's over? Because Jesus returns bringing his saints with him. And he establishes his kingdom up here on the earth. We are to rule and reign with him for 1,000 years. Then this old earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. And there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And God our Father is coming down to dwell upon the earth with mankind. Amen. Folks. We have to keep our eyes upon the prize, and that's what it is. Eternal life, living with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, living with God our Father. This is why we can survive. This is why we can still go and do the things that God has called us to do is because we know what the answer is. You know, they say that this earth may end December the 21st, 2012. I got news for you. It's not going to end. It is not going to end. There's going to be seven years of tribulation after the church is called out of here. After the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain are caught up to meet him in the air. And then there's going to be seven years of tribulation. And then there's going to be a thousand years of the millennium. Hey, you want the truth? Read the word. Read the Bible. Read the word God has given us. Earth and life is not going to be over. It's not going to be ending December the 21st, 2012. Amen. Maybe something awesome happening. Wouldn't it be wonderful if that's when the rapture takes place? You know, but the rapture could take place even before then. So, folks, get ready. Put on those robes of righteousness and walk up rightly before God. Without holiness, no man shall see God. And you know what? God gives you the ability to walk the steps in this life that he's called you to walk. He gives you the strength. He gives you the ability. He gives you the encouragement that you need. You know, how do we know that we've passed from life unto death, from death unto life? Is that we love the brethren and we have fellowship with them. Why do we have to have that fellowship? Because it's encouragement. When we encourage one another in the spirit, loving one another, this is what God has called us to do. We don't preach hate. We preach love. But we also say, that when God calls you out of the darkness, he expects you to walk in light. He expects you to put on those robes of righteousness and to walk uprightly before him. 
Amen. Well, we left off the last time with the second chapter of First Peter. And I left with the words that the milk of the word produces spiritual growth. You know, this is where we need to grow, is we need to grow spiritually. So we become like cedars of Lebanon. We are like calves in the stall. And we are built into a holy temple. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. And we grow in grace and knowledge into Christ in all things. And then what is Christ to the believers? What is he? If so be, ye, this is verse 3, the second chapter of First Peter. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Christians taste the Lord is gracious. You know, when you taste something, you experience it. How many of you love to hold chocolate in your mouth and just um, taste that, taste that wonderful, wonderful taste, right? Well, how much more wonderful it is to taste the Lord in our lives. We taste him and we know that he is precious and he's gracious. So what are the four things that heavenly we are to taste? We're supposed to taste the Lord. We're to taste the word of God. We are to taste heavenly gifts. He's given unto us heavenly gifts and we walk them out in our lives. And we are to taste of the powers of the world to come. That's Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the fifth verse. And then there's four earthly things that we taste. We taste the natural food, which I was just talking about. You know, I love enchiladas. I love chicken enchiladas with that with that sour cream on top of it. It's so good. I love dipping those tortillas into that sauce and eating it. Not good for me. I can eat that, and I'll tell you, my blood sugar goes way up. So we taste love here on the earth. How, how many of you know that you're loved? You've got somebody in your life that loves you. Amen? Well, we taste that love, and then we taste the things of the world. How many of you have enjoyed going out and, and mixing and mingling with your, with your friends and, and you sit and you eat together? You're tasting of the things of the world when you do this. Amen? And then we also taste of death. In this natural realm, should the Lord tarry, this body will go back to dust. But you know what? Ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Amen? Because when, when that trump sounds, we're out of that grave. So we have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. This is who Jesus is to believers. When we are believers, we come unto the living stone, Jesus, who gave us life, and that life more abundantly. He was disallowed of men, and they put him to death, right? But he was chosen of God, and he's precious to believers. Jesus is precious to believers. Then what are believers unto God? Ye also, as lively stones, this is verse 5, you are built up a spiritual house. This is what we are to God. God our Father, he has called us to be a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. We are to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Well, what are spiritual sacrifices? Spiritual men offering themselves he that is spiritual judgeth all things, but he himself is judged of no man. Then we offer up spiritual services. That's First Corinthians two and four. And my speech was and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. That your faith the faith that I'm preaching the word to you now so that your faith would grow would not stand in the wisdom of men, but your faith would stand in the power of God. These are spiritual offerings that we offer up. 
then songs, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto God. I've had people to ask me how did I maintain during the time that I was raising my seven children and we were in church when church was going on. We were there and we were always on time. We were never late. And I said, you know, I look back and I sang my way through my life. I was in a very difficult situation, but Jesus was my peace. And I went to the house of the Lord, and I took my children to the house of the Lord, and I studied the word. He was my peace. So singing and making melody into your heart unto God is a, a spiritual service that you are doing unto him. Praises let by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of the praise of our lips. Sometimes we don't feel like praising God. But you know, this is when we acknowledge that greater is that Christ that's in us. And, and we offer up, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I praise you. My body doesn't feel good. And I don't feel like getting out of this bed. But Lord, I worship you. We give him praises when we do not feel like it. In our conduct, Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who are walking not after the flesh. Our flesh would lead us away from God, right? It would lead us down the path of, of the world and we would die in our sins. The wages of sin is death. But we walk after the Spirit, after Him who gave life spiritual life eternal life we walk after the spirit in our conduct so in our personal faith for all things are for our sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of god i mean when god's people come together and they're worshiping the glory of god just opens up and you can almost see into the realm of the heavens heavenlies and this is what god's called us to do wisdom and knowledge we grow in grace and wisdom and knowledge as the lord works in our lives and we're going through trials and temptations but we are ordering our feet and our steps according to the word of god then we grow in, in wisdom and in knowledge of him we might be filled with all the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual undertaking when the holy spirit is working in us that's what he's doing that we would know the will of the father personal love who has also declared unto us your love in the spirit faithfulness philippians 127 only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ watch the words that come out of your mouth you don't know who's listening but we always know that god's listening and you think maybe nobody else heard it but god heard it god knows what's in our hearts so in in our conversation let's be faithful unto the holy spirit unto the lord who gave us life to live with one mind striving together for the faith of our gospel together we strive together for the faith of the gospel of jesus christ that he left for us this word to walk in prayers and supplications Ephesians 6 and 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, this is what the saints are. This is what the Christians are to God the Father. These are the things that's, that's being developed in our lives as we grow in Him. These are our spiritual sacrifices that we offer unto Him. I know I was asking myself here a few months ago, what are the spiritual sacrifices that he's calling? So I was glad when I came across this information, and I'm willing to share it with you. What is Christ to the believers? Verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Mount Zion a chief cornerstone elect, and precious and he that believes on him 
shall not be confounded. In other words, we're not supposed to be confounded. We're supposed to have understanding. In, in the Old Testament, you know, they, under the law, they, they told the men they had to wear something on their heads because they did not believe that they were worthy of standing with an open face before God the Father, you know. But that was in the, under the law. And God has brought us, I mean, he, that, that veil was rent in that temple from the top to the bottom. It means that we go before God the Father. Amen and amen. He has provided a place of rest, and we must find grace to enter into that place of rest. Remember, he is our helper in time of need. Isaiah 28 and 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. We know we can stand on God's word. You know, he, Jesus said, If you speak to that mountain to be thou removed and cast into the sea, and you don't doubt, he said that it would be done. And in my own life this past year, I experienced a time when I was faced with a mountain. I mean, I, if you looked at it, I didn't see any way out. But I kept saying, I speak to that mountain, you're nothing but a molehill. I speak to that mountain, you be gone in Jesus' name. You are nothing but a mountain. Not a mountain, you are nothing but a molehill in my life. And I'm telling you, God worked that thing out. And only God could have done that. And during this time, my husband was laying up there in the bed. And for two months, he was uh, in the hospital and in the rehab. And, and when they sent him home on the 1st of September, they did not expect him to live. But I'll tell you what. His doctor told him in December, he said, you are a walking miracle. I'm telling you, we have... Uh, communion at home and we have prayer and and we do the right things for him we give him the good water and and we give him a colloidal silver to bathe that knee with and you know what the doctors have taken him off of antibiotics that and you know he had said that there was nothing that would heal that infection in his right knee isn't god good I mean, isn't, isn't the Lord good? <laughs> amen and amen. You know, we know that the foundation of the church was laid in Jerusalem, right? And you know what? When did that first revival come? Read the book of Acts, that first chapter, second chapter. I mean, the Holy Ghost came. Ooh, I mean, the Holy Ghost came. And the church was established. And if you think, God, how could it happen? They didn't have radio. They didn't have television. But they carried the word out. And churches were set up. And the Christian word spread to where it is today. To where it is today. And we know that our nation is not in a good place. We know. But all I can say is our Heavenly Father has this whole world in His hand. That means He's got the good and He's got the evil in His hands. And He is bringing about the coming of the Lord in our lives. And He is bringing about the coming of the Antichrist. The fulfillment of the Scriptures. Amen. He's doing it. We don't like to see what's happening in our land. And this is why we have to keep it submitted to the Lord. That's why we have to keep praying for not only America, but for God's people all over the world. The old Roman Empire is certainly back in existence, and it's ruling not only here in America, but it's ruling across the world. So I'd just like for all of you to have a beautiful, blessed week. Look to the Lord. Let him give you the strength, the energy. Bring healing to our bodies. Amen. And the strength to do what he's called us to do. Amen and amen.